Hi everybody. Uh, in the last video we talked about hashing and hash tables and in this video what I want to do is just code a very basic hash table uh, to put some of these concepts down into practice and then also this is something these concepts will be something you can use again in a in a future assignment. Um, so I'm going to be coding here. What I would like you to do is just kind of watch and follow along and every so often I will pause and let you know I'm going to pause and that will be your indicator to um, pause the video and then kind of catch up with whatever you see on the screen. All right, so let me code up first and just kind of follow along uh, with your eyes first and then you can type in uh, shortly. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is define a class called hash table. This class, uh, every class needs to have, well, it doesn't need to, but it should have a class constructor. Okay, So I'm creating a hash table data type that I will be able to use from within inside my Python code. Now under the hood of the hash table, I need a place that's actually going to store the values, that's going to have those slots where I can put things into. Now, really, the, the way I wanted, I can do this in Python is by using a array list. Okay, so an array based list. Um, but I don't want you to think about this as, an, as a list, right? Um, I want you to think of it as an array, as a contiguous block of memory that we're going to take advantage of, right? Now, um, what I need to do though, remember, because a hash table is a nonlinear data structure, we're not going to put items in this thing adjacent to one another. We would need to have empty slots and then our hash function is going to determine where in the table we start pitting, putting the data, right? So it could go in index 0, could go in index 11, could go wherever. Um, but what I, So what I will do is I will initialize this list to be empty by saying I want to put the value none in every slot. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, Python has some syntactic sugar where if I put none in brackets, okay, that's saying create a list with the special value none in it, and then I multiply that by an integer, okay, this will make 20 copies of none in a list, right? Um, let's see what this looks like. Let's create a method uh, so that we can print out our hash table and actually see that this is the case. Okay, so I'm going to define my stir method, my stir dunder method, and all I want it to do is to uh, return the string version of this list. Okay, all right, so um, I'll pause a second and let you catch up here, and you can pause the video if you like. All right, so now let's try this out. Um, let me create kind of the main area for testing this. So uh, good practice is to do it like this. Oh, terrible typing today. Okay. Uh, if underscore underscore name equal equal underscore underscore main. This is um, a way of saying that if we import this module, import this hash table.py module into another file, we only want that we don't want this code to run. The code we're about to type in here will only run if we're running this file, specifically hash table.py. Okay, so let me make a new instance of my hash table. And I'll print it. Okay, and what I should see down here is a list of 20 something nuns. You know what? I should move myself so you can actually see it. <laughs> How's that? Um, so here, down here is my hash table. And you can see it's kind of just a list. All these slots are empty. Okay. Um, but we've got the space there. But what would be good is if we could configure the size of our hash table, right? So what I will do is instead of fixing the hash table size at 20, is I'm going to make this a parameter in the constructor that defaults to 20. Okay, so this is a default parameter and it defaults to 20. So right now, because I'm not calling it with a value, uh, 
I still get size 20, but I could change this. Say I want a hash table with 10 slots. Well, here we go, hash table with 10 slots. Say I want a hash table with 10, 24 slots. Well, now I got that too. Okay, so um, let's just go back to using 20 for now. All right, so I've kind of got the structure there. It's ready to go. Um, now I need to put something in my hash table. Okay, so uh, what I will do is I'm going to define a method called put. Remember our, our goal here with a hash table is we want to put things in these hash in the hash table so that we can later get them out in big O of one time. So those are the two operations we care about, putting things in, getting things out. That's really it, okay? And then later also we may want to check to see is the thing in there without getting it, okay? So, but first we got to put stuff in, all right? All right, so where in our array, in our self.table, are we gonna put something? Okay, so put takes a value. And where in the world are we gonna put something? Well, we have to write a hash function in order to figure out which index in the table we wanna put it, okay? So um, let's write that hash function. First thing that we will do here in our put method is we got to hash the value, okay? And that's going to tell us the index in the table where we put it, right? Well, I need to write this hash method. Whoops, excuse me. It should be self.hash. There we go. Of course, self.hash does not exist yet, okay? So I'm going to write it, okay? So I'm going to hash a value. So what hash method do you want to use? Um, last time we talked about three hash methods. We talked about modulo, the folding method, and the mid-square method. Let's just do the simplest one. Let's just do modulo. Okay, so how are we going to write this? We want to mod the value by the size of the table. Okay, so how do I mod the value by the size of the table? Well, one of the things I can do very simply is to do uh, return. The hash needs to return something. It's going to return this index of where I need to put it, the hash value. Value modded by the length of self.table. Right? Uh, this is the modulo function as we defined it. Okay. So I'll pause here for a second, let you catch up this far. All right, so now this should give us our index. Now notice we've written our hash function here and it takes a value. This value we're assuming is an integer. Okay, and that's a pretty big assumption, right? So right now we're just making a hash table that the only thing you can put in it are integers. If we try and put in a string or a float or something else, this is gonna break. That's okay. Again, we're really, usually hash tables are only dealing with numbers um, because almost anything in, a well, anything in a computer can be represented as, as a number or as an integer if you want it to, okay? So now I've got my index back and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I need to put the thing at the index. So that's not so hard, self.table sub index gets the value. Easy peasy, right? Let's try it. Okay, so let me, let's go down here. Let's put in the value 5. Okay, I'm going to put in the value 5 and then print out my hash table. And I should see that 5 has been inserted into slot number 5, right? Because I hashed the value 5. 5 mod the length of the table. The length of the table is 20 by default. 5 mod 20 is 5. So then self.table sub 5 gets 5. 0, let's go down here to our table. Slot 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There it is. All right, let's put in a more interesting value. Let's put in something bigger than the length of the list. Let's put in that. 
right? Remember what a hash function does. It takes something from a great big space, potentially infinite number of integers, and condenses it down into a fixed space. In this case, it's hashing to a value between 0 and 20. Well, let's see where it puts this one. Here it is. Slot number 1, right? Slot 0, slot 1. Okay, so everything's great until, right, we need to, we put something in that's maybe already occupying one of these slots. We don't, we don't really necessarily want to overwrite any values that are already in the hash table. So what we should do here, before we assign anything in our put method, we should check to make sure that the slot is empty first. Okay, so let's do this. If self.table sub index is none, right, that means the slot is empty. Save the value. Okay, however, there could be, it could be the case that, um, all right, well, if it's not none, then there is a value here, right? There's a value in this location. Um, it could be that that value is the same one you're trying to insert, right? So if I call like ht.put5 and ht.put5, um, that's okay, right? Uh, we're going to, in this case, allow it because generally in most implementations, uh, in fact, I think in... Yeah, in most implementations, a hash table can only have one copy of a particular value in it, okay? Um, there are some tricks you could do to have more than one value, uh, in which case this would kind of become a bag, as uh, the type of data structure that is. But usually we only want one copy of a value in a hash table, okay? Because remember, the main purpose of a hash table is to search and to search in big O of one time. So if the thing's already there, fine. Um, what we can do is just sort of say else if self.table.index uh, equal equal value, um, well, you know what? If, if the value is already in there, you can go ahead and overwrite it. Right. There's really no harm in that. Um, slot is empty or the same. Save the value. There's not really a ton of harm in this. Right? You might be overwriting something every once in a while, but you'll only be overwriting the same value. Right? Um, if I run this again, here's my 5. He's in, still in slot 5, even though I've put it there twice. No problem. The problem is when you encounter a hash collision. Right? So when you've got two different values that map to the same index, right? So for now, let's just print out a warning. Hash collision. Oh no. Right? Let's make this happen. All right. So I'll put this up here and I'll pause for a second so you can catch up if you need to. Okay. So uh, hash collision. Well, let's see. I've put this in my hash table and it winds up at slot number one. Let me put in one, right? Because of my modulo function, when I put one in here, that should index to this place. So this is a hash collision. This guy is already here. Let's run it. Hash collision, oh no. And you can see here that when we print it, we have not overwritten that value. Right Now, what are we going to do when we have hash collisions? Um, we still would like this value, even though there's a collision, we would still like it to be stored in this hash table. Uh, so what are we going to do? We'll talk about that in the next video. Um, for now, though, let's write the other method that we need to write for our hash table, which is get. Right? So we want to get the value. Getting the value is essentially the search, right? Hey, give me this value. If it's there, I should get the value back, right? If I call get five, I want to get the five back. But if I call get on a value that's not there, what would you expect to get? 
Well, you would expect to get none. Okay, so this is what we hope to achieve. All right, and this is really easy. All you need to do is once again hash the value you're looking for and then return whatever is there. Okay, so I'm defining get. I get my hash value of the thing I'm looking for, and I return it, right? So if the thing is in the hash table, I'll get it back. Uh, if the thing is not in the hash table, I'll get none, and I know it's not there. And by the way, the only thing I'm doing here is calling self.hash.value, which calls these mathematical computations very fast, big O of one, okay? So let me print out um, ht.get five. Right? So what do I expect to see? Well, I should see five when this prints. Right? And here it is. I got my five out. Let's call print ht.get. Let's say six. Right? Six is nowhere in this hash table. Okay? So this should return a none for me. And here it is. Okay? Cool. Well, how about if I print ht.get1? What do you think is going to happen? Ah, oh, I got this. Well, why did I get this? Well, you know, my hash value returned slot number one here. What's in slot number one? This guy. Yeah. So ht.get1 is not returning what I thought it should. Okay. So why don't I make this a little smarter? If self.table subindex equal equals the value that I'm looking for, then I found it, right? Return this thing. Else, let me for now just print this warning and I'll say, uh, oops, value not what I expected. So the other value that is okay to return is, of course, if that uh, index has the value none, right? So if I get back either of these things, that's okay. But if I get something back from the hash table and it's not what I expected in that slot and it's not none, ugh, that's a problem. So let's run this. Okay, so let's look here. So first, here's my hash table. Here's what the values are in it. First, I got five, which is good. Then I got six, which is, ooh, not so good. Um, Nothing there. That's okay. Again, we're just doing a check. Is this thing here? Then I call get one. Oops, that is not the value I expected, right? Why is this printing none? Because of, oh yeah, because, haha, <laughs> because this function, what does a function return? If it doesn't specify a return value, it returns none. Um, so why don't I, instead of Printing that, why don't I return that string? There we go, that's a little bit better. Um, all right, cool. So this is kind of the basics of a hash table, but you know, it's not sufficient yet because I've got this problem of hash collisions. So the next step is gonna be, how do I resolve hash collisions? And we'll talk about that in the next video.